What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So today we're going to be building one of my favourite kind of tanks and that is an ecosystem aquarium. What is that? Well basically I like to define it as a tank you basically do pretty much no maintenance to. Initially it's a little bit of setting up, a little bit of tinkering and getting everything set up right but after about a month it's pretty much just water top ups and then every three months a good water change, that's it. So you make sure that the plants and all the critters and fish, and everything works together to create a really, really good balance. Obviously this is a little bit different than say, I don't know, an African cichlid aquarium where you just pushing food in, there's waste everywhere, constant water changes, that kind of thing. This is just to sit back and just chill out and watch it and let it do its own thing. I've done it a few times in the past and really enjoyed it. They can be so rewarding as well. So here's where we're at so far. Yesterday you saw me make those upright and I made three of those and then it's just a case of like a strut across on the bottom three on the top and then I'll put like a flat board on ow <laughs> need to sand that as well <laughs> yeah flat board all the way across as well so yeah it's pretty simple design and then I'll just put some flat boards going around all of these sides and that'll just sort of give it all strength as well you'll see So here's where we're at. Blech. So here is where we're at. Oh. <laughs> you fall over. <laughs> yeah, here's where we're at. I've added boarding all the way around the edges and on the top. So there you go, you can see there, look. So again, it's not the prettiest, but it's strong and that's the main thing. We've got space down the bottom for some more tanks as well. Oh, it should look good when we're done. But now I just need to paint it all and then after that I can take it apart and rebuild it in the studio. Oh. Right, that's all the uprights and framework stained. And now all I need to do is paint all the flat surfaces on the top and on the bottom black, and that'll look really, really tidy then. The good thing about staining and using black is that it hides any imperfections and it makes like an amateur carpenter like me, not even amateur, <laughs> look, you know, I can make something that looks half decent, you know? We're getting there now. It's been more of a struggle than I thought trying to fit it into this small space. A few things I forgot was that obviously I wouldn't be able to, oh, I wouldn't be able to, you know, drill those on at the side. So I had to pull it out, twist it out. I kept that all off camera, but we're getting there now. All I need to do is paint the top and bottom black and then ready to go, put a tank on it, get some fit. No, <laughs> there's so much more still to do. So this is my old studio. I've currently got a uh, 120 centimeter or four foot tank there. I've got a four foot tank there and I've got a three foot tank there. And you can see that it's just storage at the moment for the kids toys and stuff, but yeah. So I've got to get this one out, transport it over. And just like that, the tank has been moved across. My friend helped me do it. But the thing is now, although everything looks flush and perfectly flat, there will be small gaps everywhere. So we've got to add some foam board underneath so it can sit on top of that. Ideally, you would do this beforehand, but my friend was only available last night, so we just had to get it in and get it on top of the stand. So I'm just gonna lift up one side, slide some foam under, lift up the other side and slide the foam under there as well.
So I've now also painted that strip right at the front where I put that sort of padding because it was green. So you can see, obviously <laughs> it's green, but the front, there we go, look, all the way along, I've painted it black. So now it actually looks, you know, really sort of neat and tidy. Might as well like make the extra effort, haven't you? Just make everything excellent. You can't make it perfect, but try and make it excellent. Now in terms of lighting, well, I've got that, that light. That's not gonna light it enough, is it? I'm gonna go for the same light that I've got above this tank. You can see that it grows the plants really, really well and it does a great job. So, you know, I've got one available, why not use it? And these are really budget friendly lights as well. So they're just like, you know, cheap strips. They've got some half decent power on them. You know, I've raised it right above the tank to make sure we don't get algae. Cause if I found that if you had it too close, you would get algae. I'll leave a link in the description for these if you're interested or something very similar to. But like I say, if I can get growth as good as this on this tank, then I should be absolutely fine on the new ecosystem aquarium. There we go, I think that's looking good. So I've added a little sucker to this side look just to hold the wire in place so it doesn't sort of swing about. It looks much more tidy sort of swooping across like that. You won't see that wire because obviously when the water level's filled up, there becomes like two mirrors, if you like, on the side panels. Now I've got an idea that I wanna put a big piece of wood in that background area. Um, I'm just gonna try it and see how it looks because I've, I don't know, who knows? You don't know stuff until you try, right? It's gonna work. I do need to get some more wire to sort of lock it upwards so it doesn't fall in like you just saw. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use this as part of your design? This wood has given some horror stories in the aquarium world. It can go bad I, and no one knows why. And to be honest, there is a chemically smell to it. I don't know what it is. I don't wanna risk putting it in the tank anyway. I just think it will look really cool above it and I can get plants to grow all over it because of the awesome structure as well. So yeah, that's basically why. I've got lots of other wood and things that I'm gonna put inside anyway, some awesome rocks. It's just not worth the risk in my opinion. There we go, look, got it secure. So basically what's happening here is most of the weight is being taken by that point there. And then it's hooked with that twig there, which is actually like completely solid. It, it looks like it's gonna snap off at any second, but it won't. And then to stop it falling forwards, there's one piece of fishing line that goes up to there. I just need to sort out that tile again, but other than that, it's it's there, it's looking good. And what I wanna have is like lots of greenery around the tank as well with um, house plants or tropical plants like Monstera, uh, palms or whatever, you know, it don't, I don't know yet. I'll have to go to the shop and find those. But yeah, I think that's a really good use of that wood knowing that I can't put it in the tank or I probably could, I just don't wanna risk it. So what are we gonna do for filtration in this kind of aquarium? Well, I like to keep all the filtration inside the aquarium for this. Like instead of a canister filter, just keep it all in its own box. You know, that's what makes it even more of an ecosystem in my opinion. So to do that, we're gonna use an internal filter. There's tons and tons of them available. I've just got a nice cheap one down here. So there we go, look, it's just a power head, basically, with like sponges you stick on the bottom and no plug. I need to extend that wire, that's why, so I've ripped the plug off. And um, this is basically the section that goes on the bottom like that. So you've got foam, or filter foam. And then in the other section, I've got some filter floss, which just sort of polishes the water up. I mean, I'll put a new one in obviously, but yeah, so you put the uh, you put the coarser stuff on the bottom, the floss on the top, and that just plugs onto there. And actually this is quite a powerful little one and it will push around a lot of water as well. So we're gonna get the flow in the tank and we're gonna get the cleaning all in one. It's obviously not as efficient as a canister filter, but that doesn't matter because the type of aquarium we've got is gonna be absolutely, whoa, <laughs> it's gonna be absolutely packed full of plants and that'll also act as a filter as well. A biological filter is what I'm getting at. So that'll do the mechanical work and that'll do the biological work. <laughs> well, not that obviously, that's just an empty tank.
Right, there we go. Lighting done. Weird wood thing done. <laughs> Filtration done. So the cable loops over the back, comes down the bottom. It runs to the side there. Then I've used this, what is it, like a Velcro cable tie to tidy all the wires. They run down the back. And then you can see there's the plug socket for the filter. And the light is obviously already plugged in. So that looks nice and tidy. There will be tanks under there actually eventually for storage. Um, like, you know, plants. I'll be just, I just love growing plants. <laughs> Wherever there's a space, I'll put a tank in. It might annoy some of you that this is off center as well, but it's just, I wanted it right in the middle of the gap. And it just so happens that this side comes out further than this side. So yeah, it's not gonna hurt. I mean, I know it'll bug some of you, but most of the time the view's gonna be like that, isn't it? Or sorry, like that. Or like that, whatever, you get me. But the plan of having a desk all the way to the ends was so that I could put like plants and different things like that on there. So let's go and get some of those now. I wanna find something that I know can sort of trail into this whole top section as well. Like, oh, it should look fantastic, shouldn't it? Let's go find something. Okay, straight away I've spotted a few things that will work really well. So these ivies, look at this, they're actually wrapped around, which means that I can unravel them, put them all the way through that wood. That'll look so good, won't it? And also around here, I really like the look of these as well. I don't know what they are. Philodendron, but look, lovely green leaves, awesome. In the foreground, or well, not the foreground, but the, <laughs> the side of the tank at the front. Yes, and these, ah, oh, I like them all. I might just buy one of everything. Oh yeah, it's Monstera, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, Monstera. But this will definitely work. I'm definitely getting a few of these. Okay, here's what we've got. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I went a bit overboard, I don't know. But we've got a nice big chunky Monstera there. We've got the Ivy in the middle. Again, that's wrapped around both of those. We've got a Bromeliad. This is called a Flaming Sword or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about that kind of stuff. Um, and this is like a palm as well. So we've got some hype with that one. We've got the ivy to trail all over the wood. And we've got the bromeliad, something in the foreground with a, a bit of a pop of colour. And then a nice big monstera that will get huge. And that's what I love about them. But then up here on one of my tanks in here, if the light sorts itself out, there we go. We've also got some uh, devil's ivy or um, what's it called? Pathos? P P Pathos? Pithos? Pa I don't know. <laughs> Devil's Ivy, I actually took a clipping of this from a previous setup I had, and it's got all these big roots that they're growing right into the water, getting longer and longer. So I'm actually gonna be able to put that across as well and integrate it somehow into the newscape. Okay, okay, hold up. Now, I did just put these all up here just to sort of chuck them in and see roughly what it looked like, give you guys an idea. But I love it, it looks great already. Really, really liking it. Let me come over a little bit because the light's getting a little bit affected by that massively white bit behind. Um, but yeah, so we've got a different palm down here and I've just hooked the uh, ivy over the edge of the glass on the rim and then just trailed it all up. Uh, I was going to take them out of the pots and put them in the water, so it's actually pulling water from the uh, water column. Um, but I, I might do that with something else on that back open area just to fill out that gap with some ferns or something like that. But wow, let me step back again. I absolutely love it. I don't think I need to do anything else because these uh, ivy pots have got like that little tray, the drip tray on the bottom, which means I can water them in there without fear of it actually going everywhere. And I've had ivy in a tank in water before, so I don't think you can even sort of over water them so that puts my chances of killing it <laughs> much higher lower lower i kill lots of plants because i overwater them it's really hard to get it right sometimes but yeah seems to be with that one before i had the, the whole root system in water and it was growing great i know some of you might be concerned with the ivy being poisonous uh, don't worry i've had it in tanks before with loads of fish and no no issues so no no <laughs> no issues so we're all good there but look at that isn't this gonna look fantastic guys maybe i need a light up in this section i might do that i might add a light up there or maybe like one massive one over the top. I don't know. Anyway, that's not important right now. All I know is that in the next episode, we're going to get to start scaping this thing. I can't wait for that. Make sure you're subscribed and all that stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>